Ah, there you are. A very, very good evening to you and a very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We are, of course, live at Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us. The audience will build up as the evening goes on. Spread the word. Tell everybody that we're here and make sure that you are here as well. Very, very important. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. I'm Scotty McClue, capital S, small C O double T I E, and McClue, capital M, small C, capital C L U E. Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and first lord of the internet, official this week. How marvelous is that? Welcome, I say. Right, who have we got here? Andy Mackay. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Scotty boy. How's it doing, says Alan Baird. Marvellous stuff. Gordon Stelling's watching, thank goodness. Jim Clark, John McCaddy, and Wendy McDonald-Thompson. Good evening, Scotty. Good evening to you, Wendy McDonald-Thompson. Frankie Foley, good evening, Scotty. Hello, says Steph Mack. Hello to you, Steph. Dinky-doo, Scotty, says Stephen Love, and Jim Gallagher. Now, televisions and radios can go off at 10 o'clock sharp on a Sunday evening because that is Scotty McClue time live here on Facebook Live. This is the big one, the only worldwide global talk show just for you, dinky do with me, Scotty McClue. Uh, James Falls watching, Catherine Wallspoon, Howard Tarski and Vicky Navarro. Dinky do, Vicky Navarro. I hope you are well and I hope that lovely man of yours as well, as well. Give him a hug as well, as well. Right, George Raffin's watching. Good. Stuart McTaggart. What's the script tonight? Big script tonight, Stuart. Lots and lots to talk about. We need to sort some of the uh, television continuity out. Tonight I was watching a major, major movie and uh, up came an announcer and promoted some tat that was coming on later. Right over the film script, right over the credits. Dear oh dear oh dearie dearie me. Catherine Scully's watching Dinky Doo. Good evening, Scotty. I'm watching you on my night shift. You're very welcome to watch me anywhere you like. Lovely to have you with us live here on Facebook Live. This is the big one. This is the one everyone is talking about. The one everyone is watching. And telling 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Just for you seeing Dinky Doo on Facebook Live. Scotty, you're coming to the Hope Over Fear event on the 16th of September. I may well be there, my dear, but if not, I'll be there in spirit. I'm very, very maxed at the moment. I barely get time to broadcast. Dave Pem, thank you, do Dave. Lovely to have you with us. Edward Strang Steele's joined us. Good evening, Scotty, says Alex Robertson. Good evening to you, Alex. Lovely to have you with us. Good night. I'm up at five, says Peter Ewing. Peter, lovely of you to wait up to the start of the Scotty McClure Show live on Facebook Live, and we wish you a safe and peaceful good night. Good night, Lala, and sleep well. Alan Brown's watching over in the United States of America in Washington, D.C. How tremendous is that? Hello from Albany in New York, says Martin Triddle. Hello, Martin. Lots of love to Albany in New York. There's a lot of talk at the moment of Scotty McClue going to broadcast across New York City. How would I get on there? You can tell me. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Colin Budge is watching Dinky Doo. Louise Gemmell's joined us. Gordon here as well. Ali Malone. Colin Roger. Fantastic. Lovely to have you all with us, guys. Now, what do you think of what's going on in the world these days? My goodness me. The Brexit thing. What I would like to say about that is why not just cancel it? It's an email to the European Parliament to say, look, we've had a bit of a think here and uh, we're not quite ready to do all this stuff. We're not terribly sure it's good for us. So we'll stick with you at the moment if, wait for it, you give us a bit of a better deal. So there we are. Think about that. The world's gone mad, says Angie Thompson. Uh, what about the milk? Did you check it out? Uh, Chris, nobody knew what you were on about. I did check with one or two people, but we wondered what on earth you were on about. So there we are. And uh, John Robertson, dinky do to you. Uh, NK is dangerous, eh? Says John McCaddy. Well, yes, but I was thinking tonight, 
Uh, you know, are they just joining the clan? If you think about it, so many people have actually got a nuclear deterrent already. Is he wanting just to play with the big boys? We need to find out what's on. I don't think he's a silly man, and I don't think he's a man to be taken lightly. So there you are. Gone stilling. Scotty, I need to get to my bed. I'll be at the Queen's Ferry Crossing for the opening ceremony. I'll say hello to Her Majesty on your behalf. Yes, do. I would feel we're so privileged having Her Majesty up to open the Queen's Ferry Crossing. And she's there uh, following in the footsteps of Queen Margaret. How marvellous is that? Uh, Dinner the dog, my master is numpty huge. He's going to donate some of his gyro to your GoFundMe page. The GoFundMe page is doing rather well, thank you. And if you want to help to develop the programs, guys, please, if you've got a spare couple of quid, a spare fiver, stick it into Scotty McClue's GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. All right, and then that's you doing your bit. It helps to get a biggish fund together for little bits of uh, advertising on the internet, for uh, building up the shows, for looking at little bits of equipment. It's all tremendous. So if you've got a spare fiver, that will be very, very, very well spent if you pop it into the Scotty McClue Media Fund at gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Or if you prefer PayPal, it's all safe for cards and everything. If you prefer PayPal, uh, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word. Helen Wallace is watching. Hi, Scotty. I remember you in the Scott FM days when you loved the single ones and people in the dolls as Mark Dobson. Uh, I've been playing too much of the PlayStation, I think, says Angie Thompson. Helen Wallace is watching. Dinky do. NK is just a pantomime to prop up the petrodollar, says Colin Budge. Interesting take on it, Colin. Yes. Uh, an aside, one of these distractions. Have you noticed when there's something big coming in, like the Scottish referendum, or the EU referendum, somebody does something silly. A bit like when you're all going out to aunties and one of the wee ones doesn't want to, and they fall over and they go, oh, I think I've broken my leg, and all that sort of stuff, and it's a big pantomime, it's a distraction. Scotty, what do you think about them not allowing people to cross with our beautiful saltire, uh, in the end it was allowed. Yeah, we need to re get people to realize that the Scots and the Scottish movement, it's not nationalist in the same way that British nationalism would be, or um, German nationalism, or something like that. In fact, it's the antithesis. We need to also remember that at the Act of Union, Scotland and England had equal rights. Now, Mrs. May shouldn't actually be going to the Brexit talks without Miss Sturgeon at her side. So there you are. So there's a lot to think about here and a lot to discuss. Um, so yes, the saltire is Scotland's national flag, and it should actually be flying from all the public buildings. And it most certainly should be respected. I take it if the Union flag was produced, it would have been allowed. So there we are. So, you know, let's get these things sorted out. Uh, what's that thing he's got in the news that the leader of NK? Um, so there we are. Yes, that is a nuclear bomb. All right. Uh, who owns the bridge, says Ian Walker? Well, Scotland owns the bridge. Scotland paid for it and built it. So Scotland owns the bridge. It's Scotland's bridge. It's a great feat of Scottish engineering. Tremendous, wonderful. Uh, Scotland's only treated as a colony in the Union. Well, yes, but I mean, that's for a very, very short time because Scotland will leave the Union. It needs to economically. It cannot be held up by the madness that is in charge of Westminster at the moment. So there you are. If the Queen opens it, it's a bridge too far. Ian Walker, you're talking complete and utter nonsense. The Queen is our sovereign lady. She is the head of state in Scotland. She is the Queen of Scots. So there we are. She is also 50% Scots. And it's marvellous that we've managed to get her to open the crossing, especially at the age of 92. How fantastic is that? So there you go. Uh, Andy Taylor's watching. Dinky-doo, Andy. Marvellous stuff. 
Sorry for being late, Sam, says Carl Morris. Not at all, Carl. You're here now, and you're very, very welcome. Uh, a very good audience last week to the programme. You'll see it was just under the 13,000 live on here. And then, of course, during the week, uh, you'll see Twitter was up at 125,000, 54,000 during the show. How fantastic is that? Scotty, get your people to call my people, says Dino the Dog. What shall we call your people, Dino the Dog? I thought once we'd signed the Lisbon Treaty and Article 50, it was a done deal to exit Europe and there was no going back. Tony Mac, let me tell you something about politics. There is always a going back. Politics are the art of the possible. And you can always go back. What I think they should do, if we are being absolutely playing fair, and they're not playing fair at the moment, is rerun the EU referendum with all the facts. Take the politics out of it and look at the economics. It's the same with the Scottish referendum. Take the politics out of it. Take the bias out of it from the media and rerun it with all the facts checked. The full amounts. Not jars figures or anything like that which can be easily disproved proper figures of what's in the bank, what Scotland owns or could own or will own when it becomes independent. So there you are. That's what we're talking about. Um, so David Davis, the man in the edge, just watch him. Uh, so there you are. He's stuttering his words good questioned. Well, it's a big job, Ian. I think you've got to make allowances. What's the point of opening the bridge just to close it again? What do you mean just to close it again, Angie? It's an official opening. So there you are. We marched in The Hague and Berlin for Scottish independence. What do you think about the international support? Raymond de Gistra. Yes, um, very good. I mean, all the support that you can get is excellent stuff. But I think what needs to happen is uh, Mrs. May needs to check up on the position and realise that it's 50-50. So anything that's brought in after the union, officially, by law, has to be 50-50. I think you'd probably even find that the national broadcaster should be a 50-50 decision. Uh, get the Queen to open a food bank. Absolutely no problem, Ian. You seem to have so many chips on your shoulder about the Queen. This wonderful lady is doing a fantastic job. All these big palaces and stuff that you're going on about are totally unsuited to homeless people. All right? So it would take billions to convert them to that. They're also national assets. They're owned by you and by me. So there we are. The Queen is the curator of the crown. She is the head of state. Excellent. Uh, we'll never be equal in the Union, Scotty. Wendy MacDonald Thompson, we must be equal in the union by law or it will nullify and void the 1707 treaty so there you are so that needs to be very very carefully checked up on remember you heard it here first with me scotty mcclure uh, people can't move forward for people living in the past well ian you're the one that's living in the past i'm afraid i want to move forward right now the only thing is we need to be clear on our history uh, Scotty, we see all the Queen's haters, but they're the first to moan her when our time comes. Absolutely. Listen, it's all been tried before. We tried to do without a monarchy and turn this country into a worst shambles in its history, only surpassed by Brexit. So there we are. Uh, what law, says Chris McCauley? Well, you'll need to check up on that, Chris. It's very difficult for me to explain it all to you, just over a very short broadcast. But if you check up, You'll find it was invoked quite recently, actually. I won't go into detail because I've got that up my sleeve. A very, very safe place to have it. So there we are. Thomas Hines watching. Dinky Doo. Melanie McDonald's watching. Tremendous. The Queen's a great woman. So there we are. Theresa May, on the other hand, he says, Oh, you're harsh. Harsh on Mrs. May. A bit savage. So there you are. You'll find that, um, you know, they're working hard from the back as well at the moment. Just watch the space. Uh, are you willing? Because it'll be a couple of days paid 
Off wax, says Angie Thompson. There you go. Fantastic. Apparently they had to pay the dockers to dip the cranes when Churchill died. The television announcer going, they're out of a mark of respect for the great man. The cranes of London's docks that built all the great ships and are bowing. You know, and I, they say, the guy says, no, we're not doing it unless we get paid. No, we're not doing it unless we get our money. Uh, so there we are. So, a broadcast, says Chris McCauley. Yes, a very broadcast, Chris. Uh, there we are. Dinky do. Good evening, Scotty. What's the subject, says Kevin Whibley. Many, many subjects tonight, Kevin. We are looking at Brexit. I'm suggesting that we just cancel. Cancel the whole thing. I think that would be very important. Or rerun the EU referendum with the facts this time. Uh, Colin Jones is watching. What do you think about the nonsense that the Tories kept saying Scotland can't make it on their own financially? Well, that is absolute nonsense. Their worry is that Westminster can't make it on its own financially if Scotland leaves. Scotland can most certainly make it on its own financially. Even if we saved between 40, 60, even 100 billion that we give to Westminster right now for squandering, then it would make a difference. Ali Ross is watching Dinky Doo. Ali, lovely to have you with us. Um, Churchill was a, oh now, Colin. Colin, there you are. You don't want to knock him. Uh, wow, you actually pronounced my surname correctly. Nobody does that. First time, says Kevin Wibley. Yes, I do, Kevin, you see, not a problem at all. So there you are. Uh, tell us a story about Article 61. No, Chris, I'm not going to tell you this story. You can read all that stuff. You can actually get a hold of all that stuff and read it, and you can read the background to it as well. Uh, Westminster's a drain on our resources, says Wendy MacDonald Thompson. Never a truer word was spoken. Wendy MacDonald Thompson, Westminster is indeed a drain on our resources, but um, the game has worked for 310 years, and they don't want the old uh, golden goose to go. So there we are, Kevin Wibley. Yes, absolutely, Kevin. Excellent, and you've given me a thumbs up there. Scotland is loaded, says Colin Budge. It most certainly is, and a lot of people don't like it. Also, the other thing is, Scotland has never been better run than it is being run at the moment. And although Miss Sturgeon was saying, you know, about the nationalist word, she'd rather it wasn't in the party. I could quite see where she was coming. And as for the Labour Party, I don't know why they don't just walk hand in hand with the SNP, because you couldn't get a cigarette paper between them uh, a, a few years ago. And then the SNP just sort of absolutely forged ahead and became a very, very serious political force. Great Yorkshire Radio's just shared the video. Excellent stuff. And uh, history written by the victors, says Gary Crossan. Yes, indeed. Uh, Colin Budge is quite right. India, India down to 37%, Scotty. Uh, it's a poll like this week. Yes, but check that poll, Sandy, because I think it's double that. The last one I heard, it was approaching 72% percent of the people so what you had you had 45 percent counted then when you take who didn't actually vote and also who got swayed by hope over fear you can stick another 26 percent onto that so that's you up at 71 percent so there you go sandy i wouldn't believe the polls on that one what you need to do sandy is ask yourself if you're a scot or if you're not that's what you need to ask are you for the good of scotland or are you not, right? The only way we'll have the Scottish Labour Party back in is if they back independence. Had they done it in 2014, September 2014, they may well have been in power now. So there you go, Sandy. It's as simple as that, instead of just being toast, wandering about in the wilderness going, what just happened there? So there are my granny. My granny stood up for Atley. Uh, so there we go. Um, we will do it this time. Cheated, not defeated, says Wendy. Yes, indeed. Alex Duff is watching. Dinky do, Alex. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, folks, you're watching Scotty McClue. We are global. We're live on Facebook Live. That is the big one. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live right now. You notice I have divested myself of the bonnet. Smart move or madness? You tell me. Uh, Westminster only holds us back, says Gary. 
There's a movement to take down the tobacco baron's statues in George Square and the slavery history. Good say. Stick Andy Stewart up there. And Scotty McClure. I don't see why you have to have passed uh, on to the next life before you get a statue. I think stick a statue of Scotty McClure up there. Andy Stewart. Excellent stuff. It's Kesha Dugdale's. So there we are. Um, Mark Nugent. Right. Well, Mark, that's personal stuff. I'm not going into that in the program. Uh, so there are. Can we all share? What is the time here? Heavens above, time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Have you noticed? Oh, yes. Get sharing. Share, 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 share. All right. Very important. Richie McCusker is watching. Dinky do, Richie. What happened to common law in this country? In what respect, Chris? You're asking these very, 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 very wide ranging, one size fits all questions. So you need to qualify it and ask why are you asking the question? America spent 3.6 trillion on the war and terror. OMG, end world hunger and poverty instead. You'll never actually end world hunger and you will never end poverty. Yes, because they are actually relative values. So you'll always have the poor. If I had a million pounds or a million dollars and you had 800,000 pounds or 800,000 dollars, you're the poor one. Do you see how it works? Right, there we are. I thought I heard Big Ben last night. <laughs> he was steaming coming up the stairs. Ha! Ah, very, very good. I thought maybe we should have um, a clock in Glasgow because Big Ben's gone silent. The time should come from the Glasgow toll booth. So there we go. Uh, get a bell in there called Big William. Um, is is Bouncer still on Neighbours? I don't know. I don't watch Neighbours, Kenny. Um, Kenny Blair there. Wadge has just joined us. Wadge is watching Jerry Carty. Wadge says, Dinky do, Dinky do, Wadge. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, folks, you're looking at the world's top talk show with the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet. Scotty McClue. Dinky do. Great Yorkshire Radio. There we are. You've just mentioned us. Thank you very much. Uh, come on, Wedge. Dinky do to you. Share, 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 share. Those of you who are internet savvy, get type, type, typey, typey, type, and put I'm watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live just for you, and take the link, take the link for the page, and send it round, guys. Uh, or even the Tron clock, uh, John McCaddy. Yes, does that work in the Tron steeple? That rings out when you're walking along Gal Street. Am I correct? It's got a sort of ding. Uh, we're governed by acts and statutes, not common law. Well, you see, it's like saying we don't have a British constitution when we do, but it tends not to be written down. It's effectively unwritten, and it's things like the Magna Carta, that sort of idea, the habeas Corpus Act. So there you are. Goes right away back. Shared from Body Greenock says Pete Gallagher. Dinky do, Pete. I was in Greenock very, very recently. Get the cap back on, Scotty, says John Hodgson. Do you think so? Right, guys, are you watching? Do you prefer me like this? Or do you prefer me like this? Up to you. We can either do this or we can have this. Entirely up to you. What do you think? You tell me. We'll have a discussion on that. Westminster said Scotland would be in so much debt if they became independent. But it is my belief that the Scottish government could not make that kind of decisions on finances. So how can they? Yes, they can, Raymond. Of course they can make these decisions. Why could they not make these decisions? Had they been making these decisions? Amazing. Hi, Scotty, says Ben Fasakale. Do you play Black Ops on Xbox One? I don't uh, have an Xbox, Ben. Surprise, surprise. I may well get one, though, and uh, give you a game on Xbox One. Cap on, says Andrew Mackay. A clock in Glasgow, that rings a bell. Oh, sorry, a clock in Glasgow that rings a bell, says Steve Burrows. With the bonnet, Scotty, says Gary. Do you prefer with the bonnet or without the bonnet? 
first bit of the program tonight there. Uh, hats on, Scotty. You could probably just get big a Big Ben app in your phone and avoid all the hoo-ha about yon big clock in a neighbouring country. I have to explain to you, what I don't think the government realises is that although they can hear Big Ben in the Houses of Parliament, you can't hear them 90, about 93, 90, no, sorry, uh, wait till I see, um, yes, yes, about 90% of the country can't hear Big Ben. So there you are. That's if you took 10% that could hear a lot of less, 95%. Hat off, Scotty, says Wendy McDonald Thompson. Right, hats off, strangers. Where do you hear that? Hats off, strangers. Have you ever heard that? Bonnet on, says Ronnie Neely. For goodness sake, make up your minds. If you if you mention 1215, that laugh, you. I don't know what you mean by that. Philip Fife. Uh, hat off, Scotty, says Wendy McDonald Thompson. Uh, tell Ben to come, Ben. If Ben doesn't come, Ben, tell Ben that Ben will Ben to bring Ben, Ben. So there we are. Yes, very good. Tell Ben to come, Ben. If Ben doesn't come, Ben, tell Ben that Ben will Ben to bring Ben, Ben. Yes. Does anybody know what we're talking about? Ben, if you're coming, Ben the Hoose. Create a public second chamber after independent power to the people. So, would you like a Scottish House of Lords? That's what we're talking about here. You're talking about a second chamber. That's a lot of Ben's, says Shelley McRobbie. Absolutely, Shelley McRobbie, thank you so much for sharing all the share, 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 share of Scotty McClue around the internet and all your radio stations online. Uh, what do you think about lawful rebellion, says Chris McCauley. Now, Chris, I think that uh, you need proper information going out to the people. That's what my life has been dedicated to, informing, educating, and entertaining not just one nation, but every nation. With Scotty McClue, dinky do. Uh, Susan Forrest, hats off, I say. Thank you very much, Susan. Lovely to have you with us. Come bend the living room and say to my lad, says Angie Thompson. No way, Scotty. Westminster should scrap there, says Frankie Foley. Well, you know, if you have an independent Scotland, do you want an upper chamber um, just to check on laws and to give Scotland even a higher place in the international stage. Uh, no, just a second chamber for the public to make decisions, says Colin Budge. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Scottish House of Lords sounds good, says Steve Burrows. Excellent, Steve. So you'd be up for a Scottish House of Lords. Educators then, says Chris McCauley. Chris McCauley, I've been educating you now for about 25 years. So there we are. Education, education, education. I loved when a top business person came in wanting to advertise on the radio station I was involved in. And he saw me and he said, Scotty, we learn more from you on the radio than we did at the school. There you are. Uh, Hat sure looks iconic from Los Angeles voting for the bonnet on. Brad Mitchell in LA. Bonnet on for Brad Mitchell. I'll leave it on till somebody commands me to take it off. Uh, only if it would based on us voting them in, says Frankie Foley. Well, of course, you would be able to vote them in. Or you might be able to, um, you know, when uh, when Miss Sturgeon decides she's had enough of running the show, she could maybe go into the upper chamber. And, of course, Alex Salmond, very much so, the upper chamber. And um, some of the strong founding fathers and, fa and founding figures of the SNP. Um, so there we are. We could vote them in. The hat must stay on. So Shelley McRobbie, right, Shelley? Uh, what about the scandal in the Isle of Man? Yes, Chris, absolutely. There's scandal everywhere. If you look hard enough for it, you will come across scandal. So there we go. And uh, Chris, are you lacking in your education when you're so desperate for McClue to take up the job for you? Um, what's the capital of Ethiopia, Scotty? Ah, you've got me there. I don't know the Ethiopian capital, so there you go. May as well front up, but doesn't mean I can't learn. I can't find out. Fiona Summers is watching. Uh, no, Scotty, you look younger with your cap off. Uh, the tie should go. It's Sunday. 
relax so we'll take the cap off just now so there we go and um you know smooth down my thick head of dark hair um it's oil the only reason why the government won't let scotland break free and uh, not the only reason tony <coughs> they know how uh, intelligent scots government is they know how well scotland is being run at the moment remember uh, until the last election when uh, obviously one or two farmers had, had too much to drink um the snp had 56 out of 59 seats in scotland so not bad not bad you know 56 out of 59 and uh, you've got to allow for an independent and i think with a tory and a labor flung in there as well as the liberal a liberal and a Labour. can't remember anyway all that <coughs> yes that's why everyone needs educated in what is really going on good chris well let's ask you the question what is really going on uh, they want to take our whiskey too says john mccarty yes scotland has got billions and billions in export and the latest ruse is to try and brand scottish stuff as british a bit like when andy murray was winning the title he was british if he ever lost anything he was scottish uh, that kind of nonsense so we need to get on top of that and um sort that out you know fight fire with fire as they say um so there we are uh ruth hates what scotland is doing she's raging she's gone but well you see i think every party in the scottish parliament should be a non-unionist party otherwise what are they doing in the scottish parliament surely there are there are wooden horse of a party that's what i would have said so scotland should be run by parties that are only interested in scotland and if you're not interested in independence you're not interested in scotland uh, so there we go shocking shocking uh, so that's i've always wondered um what the uk house of lords actually does says tony mack well a lot of people wonder that but i can remember when um they got the hereditary peers out of the lords and said thank you gentlemen and goodbye um that was that was actually bad news because again that was uh, very discriminatory just because someone is an aristocrat or the son of an aristocrat doesn't mean they don't have a lot of wisdom about how to run the country it doesn't necessarily mean they do but you'll find that a lot of these people are very responsible they're landowners they know the law um they've been educated at the best of schools the best of universities all that sort of things so they bring a lot to the lord so i think we need to you know chuck the discrimination either way and uh, what the upper chamber does is just keep a bit of a break on the house of commons uh, and at the moment it so needs that so there you are so they do a lot uh, the debate stuff that also requires a lot of seniority and the fact that they've been on the earth for a long time. I mean, I was a very, very, very smart 21-year-old, but um, I'm much smarter uh, now. So there you go. Now, James Cotters is watching. Keep telling it like it is, Scotty, and have a good night, says Raymond Gistra. Dinky do, Raymond. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Very, very much appreciated. Guys, I'm just going to bring you um, up a little bit. So there we are. I'm sticking with you. I'm sorting something out here. That's it. That's it. Absolutely sorted. So there we are. Doing all my own technical stuff. Brilliant, you see. A big shout out for Christopher Berra and the rest of the Scottish team against Malta tomorrow, Scotty. Says Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright. Dinky do to you. And a big thank you from Scotty McClue. Right, folks, if you've just joined us, it's Scotty McClue you're watching. Capital S, small C, O, double T, I, E. That's the Scotty McClue, capital M, small C, capital C, L, U, E. The world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet. That is official. Please, I beg of you, whenever you see anything with Scotty McClue on it, either on Facebook, on Periscope, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Google+, Plus, on Google, share it and share it and share it and share it. Because all you're doing is setting up a platform for you. There we are. Uh, the Tories have set up a contact centre. So there we are. <laughs> you phone them, they make you poorer. 
Uh, Bera and McGinn too watching. Thank you very much. Stephanie Hurst is watching. Dinky do, Stephanie. Lovely to have you with us, my darling. I love the uh, photos of the wedding. Very swish. You look very, very smart. Sorry I wasn't there to give you a dance. I would have been delighted. So there we are, Stephanie Hurst, a very, very fine broadcaster there, super lady. Jason Connolly is watching, Dinky Doo. Lee Birkinshaw is watching, Dinky Doo to you, Lee. And a very, very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show worldwide, globally. Tremendous. Good evening, Scotty, says Jason. Dinky Doo, Jason, I hope you're well. Good evening to you. Dinky Doo to you, brother Scotty. Fantastic. Dinky Doo to you, Lee. And John Keenan McHugh. <coughs> a very warm welcome to you. Lovely to have you with us. Excuse me while I have a sip of the barley water. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's lush. I'll get back on to the centre court now. Uh, right, there we go, guys. Share point has just appeared. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Tonight we're talking about Brexit. Should we just cancel it? And um, also, we're talking about um, Her Majesty the Queen opening the Queen's Ferry Crossing in Scotland. Tremendous. It's lovely, lovely, lovely to have her with us. Our Sovereign Lady. <clears throat> so there we go. Alice Blakemore has joined us. Alice Dinky Doo. Lovely to have you with us. Great stuff. And uh, Dinky Doo to you, Scotty. Thank you very, very much for all your felicitations, your good wishes, and all your strength. Now, remember, guys. Scotty McClue is not just live on Facebook Live. Scotty McClue is a global icon. That's me. I don't mind all these titles. I'm very humble with them. But, um, you know, first lord of the internet, I do prize. I think that is excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, she's not my queen, says Ewan Cochrane. Ewan Cochrane, newsflash. She's your queen. She's our queen. She's everybody's queen. She's the queen. She'll always be your queen. If you've got a chip on your shoulder or a lack of understanding about how the state works, that's understandable. But don't come out with nonsense like that when it's just simply not true. Uh, you can't cancel it. People voted and the government should honour it, says Lee Buckinshaw. The government don't want it, Lee. I've got my um, pamphlet that they sent out saying the government would urge you not to, uh, not to uh, leave Europe. So there you are. All that stuff, they don't want it. In fact, I think nobody wants it. Nobody wants to say this is the big prize and stand up and take responsibility for Brexit. Nobody wants to say that, right? Because it was sold to us on a, a misconstruing of the truth, to say the least. So there we are. Uh, now, uh, no chance. She's no, says Ewan Cochran. Ewan, chance big chance she is all right so you've got to accept the facts and just suck it up la where's the bonnet says dino the dog the bonnet is here dino but we put the bonnet on and then half the people said take the bonnet off again scotty so there you go erica myers just joined us from australia how you are very good to have a very wise man on you make my day says erica Dinky do, Erica. You make so many people's day coming on here from Australia and uh, letting us know what is what. I wish you could bring back Princess Diana, says Steve Burroughs. I think a lot of people do, Steve. They would uh, love to just see her again and maybe even say sorry. Uh, so there we are. God save the Queen, says Robert Cunningham. Quite right, Robert. I've not pledged allegiance, nor will I. Next thing you'll be telling me, uh, you and you have pledged allegiance by the fact that you are a British citizen and a British subject. So you have actually, you are liege of life and limb, ma'am. That's what you'd say to the Queen. Dinky do, Scotty. Great to hear you, my friends. This is Christopher Anthony Smith. Ewan, you have evolved, mate. Pity some folks are stuck in the dark ages. Says Ian Walker, Ian, you just have a lack of understanding of how the whole thing works. You think everybody's doing better than you. Newsflash? They're not. So there we are. God save the Queen. Save her from what, says Alex Duff. Save her from people showing disrespect. Save her from people who do not understand the great wonders 
of our head of state. So there we are. Never, says Michael McGuigan. Always, Michael McGuigan. So there you are. And um, so that's that. There's Frank Crombie, dinky do Frank. Lovely to have you with us, of course. And uh, you're very, very welcome. Everybody, you've just joined Scotty McClue. This is the world's top talk show. We're live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Remember, Scotty McClue is an absolute global icon and is throughout the internet. Facebook Live, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, massive in YouTube, the Scotty McClue website, 10 million people on there. Last week, we had an audience of... Uh, 13,000, I think it was. I checked just before we came on the program. That's live on the Facebook Live. During the week, we also um, had Twitter at 125,000 in 24 hours, with 54,000 during showtime. So there you are. You'll see it up. I took a screenshot, put it up for you. Uh, God's not real. The Queen's not real. I'm half American. I'll happily sack my British passport. I'm Scottish. I'm not British. Yun. All this is complete and utter rubbish. God is a superior being, a power superior to mankind. Would you like to think that Mrs. May is the ultimate power in the universe? So there you are. Have a think about it. And um, you saying you're half American, if you were to spit in a little paper cup, take it down to the lab, you check your DNA, you'll probably find you're from the African Rift Valley. Uh, so there we go. And uh, you're Scottish, you're not British. Everybody who is Scottish is British, especially at the moment. When Scotland becomes independent, we will still be part of Britain because that is the land mass and it's an amalgam of Scotland, England, Northern Ireland and Wales. That's Britain. You just no longer be part of the United Kingdom. So there we are. Scotty, I'm confused. I saw a warning in a cigarette packet today that said smoking causes blindness. I was brought up being told that too much, and he mentions, um, what can I say, self-help caused blindness. Which is it? So there you are. Well, I don't know. It depends how much of a risk you've taken in your life with smoking and with also the uh, self-help. So there we are. I know my place, Scotty. It's on a par with any royal. I'm the Laird of Hoganfield Loch, the first Lord of the Kerry, the Right Honourable King of Sarihid. Absolutely, Ian. Nobody would want to take these titles away from you. Why can't you uh, do the same, show Her Majesty the same respect she shows you? Of course, you're on a par as a human being. So there we are. African Rift Valley. Be better than being branded British. No, it wouldn't, Ewan. If you're branded British, it just means you're either a Scot or you're English or you're from Northern Ireland, or you're Welsh. Uh, Alex Duff, save her from disrespect. She'll be far too comfortable in her gold-plated mansion, having her servants run about for her daft, uh, and not a mere peasant that doesn't agree. Alex, you've been watching far too much Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest. The Queen doesn't live, live in any gold-plated mansion or anything like that. These are administrative headquarters for the state and she's our senior officer of state and curator of the crown. You know, you need to get that into your, your, your silly head. You need to get rid of all that rubbish. The, the days, it's changed since the days of the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood and, and Little John and all that lot. Uh, all that lot. General Mackay Mackay. Uh, so there we are. Ian Walker. Uh, General Mackay Mackay. Hi, Scotty. Dean of the Doug. I'm looking forward to the second coming scotty yes i'm sure if it's anything like the first one it will be fantastic indeed dino the dug so there we go excellent stuff now a word to the wise let's say uh, do a little bit of housekeeping on the scotty McClure show here we're live on facebook live 10 o'clock sharp on sunday night here through until 11. One hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment, not just for one nation, but for the whole world. This is the way television is being consumed now. So televisions and radios can go off at 10 o'clock sharp. You will be missing absolutely zero that I'm sure would help you in the way that I can help you watching Scotty McClue live on television across the globe. All right. So there you are. 
And uh, also, uh, here's some nonsense here. I understand the Queen's official residence belongs to the British people. Does she pay council tax? Yes, it's all council taxed. It brings in billions, uh, Tony. So there you are. They're all family costers. 52 pence a year. They employ 1,000 people. And uh, most of the money that we pay goes on administration. So there you are. And they get the wages the same as the rest of us. Uh, so excellent. Now, uh, Lenny Hughes says, The Queen of England cheers. When Charles takes the throne, I know there'll be many unions and loyalists turning their backs on the monarchy. And maybe they can then appreciate... Lenny, it says see more. I don't want to risk it because it's so tiny. I've got quite big fingers there. And if I touch that, I could lose part of the broadcast. Right, guys, uh, if you want to help to support the Scotty McClue broadcast and build up the show, if you've got a spare few pounds, two pounds, five pounds, a tenner, whatever you've got, then go and stick it into gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. All your cards are 100% safe on there. Lots and lots of people have already done it. And um, also, you can go on to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue if you prefer to do that that way. Anything at all, a five or a couple of quid, it all goes for a little bit of advertising. It goes to buy little bits of equipment and everything to strengthen the Scotty McClue show. Uh, 52 P's, too much if you ask me. Alex Duff, what do you get for that? Your television license is 150 quid, isn't it? How many fags have you smoked today? So there were many phone calls have you made. 52 pence, a bargain. Our own wee country, says Lenny Hughes. Absolutely. Who wants a Scottish BBC? Uh, right, when on STV England play Malta, game on. Uh, is this them still trying to colonise us? It's not working. Well, of course, the BBC could metamorphose into the SBC, the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation. I think we need to devolve all broadcasting to Holyrood, bring in our own regulator, and then make sure that everybody has got Scottish interests at heart. Because at the moment, virtually all of the Scottish media is owned and run outside Scotland, right? STV is not, um, but um, a lot of the others are, the newspapers, the public service broadcasting, etc., etc., the radio stations, all owned and run out with Scotland, and, um, you know, we are giving our money to these stations and that's going ka into somebody either in Europe or London or what have you. Uh, the Queen's a great British institution, has been representing the UK and the Commonwealth with an impeccable will to always lead from the front, says Christopher Anthony Smith. I could not agree more. You're quite right. Jazz White says, refuse to pay the TV licence, do not pay. Uh, well, the whole thing is, I don't think you can actually refuse to pay it. I think you would be breaking the law, but we need to get them. Scotty McClure has always attracted massive, massive audiences and made millions and millions of pounds for other people by accepting applause or derision on his merits. So there you are. Support Scotty McClure, I say. Pop your, pop your billions in to uh, GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure. Uh, so there we are. Is STV not still operated by English operator ITV? No, Tony, they were never operated uh, by ITV. STV, as far as I understand it, did not uh, did not go into that. They're part of the network because ITV was 15 stations. You started off in the Channel Islands with Channel Television. Then you had uh, West, Westwood Television, Southern Television, you had Anglia Television, you had Granada, you had Border, you had Tyne Tees, you had ATV, you had Yorkshire, then you had Scottish, and you had Grampian. So there we are, you had 15 when Channel 4 came along. When did the fake news start? Has it just been found out? Propaganda's media. No, what you'll find is, if you look closely at what happened during the Iraq setup, they sacked the director general of the BBC and the chairman of the BBC. Now, these were good people and they, they were uh, Labour supporters and what have you at the time, but they sacked them both because they wanted number 10 to win the propaganda war. The BBC was starting to discover the truth about Iraq. 
That did not go down well, so they got rid of the Director General. The BBC had stood by the story. The uh, governors caved in. They actually caved in. They should have stood up to number 10 because the battle with number 10 and the BBC has been going on since inception in 1922. And it really came to a head in 1926 during the general strike. Churchill offered Lord Reith, silly thing to do by the way, but he offered Lord Reith, the Director General of the BBC, £100 of his own money if he would let him broadcast. And Reith said, the BBC is not for sale. There we are. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really when your fake news started, was when uh, the BBC caved in to number 10. The fight was on. Number 10 won the battle. Surprise, surprise. And the only time they'd done that previously in recent times was Margaret Thatcher sacked the Director General because he didn't do her bidding. So there you go. A fine, fine man called Alistair Milne. A great guy. He'd worked in the Tonight program. Oxford educated. Uh, Winchester school. He was a Wickhamist, manners maketh man. And um, he came up as the controller of BBC Scotland, ran BBC Scotland with great distinction and then applied for the job of Director General. The BBC got it and was a wonderful Director General and then uh, Thatcher insisted that he be dismissed because he wouldn't do her bidding at the time of the miners' strike and all that sort of thing. Uh, so there we are. Uh, any advice for getting rid of an ulcer under my tongue? I've had it for three days. And the ointment's not doing the trick, says Alex Duff. You could try a tiny little bit of bicarbonate of soda on it. It'll sting a little bit, but it's very cleansing. See how you get on. Just a little clean finger and just a tiny wee bit into a little bit of uh, damp bicarbonate of soda and just place it on. See how you go. So there you go. Um, now, uh, Scotland. Scotty, where have you been, says Wally Logan. Wally, where have you been? I have been out and about. Everybody knows Scotty McClue. Time for a share, guys. Share, 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 share. I think we'll take the hat off now. Everybody's insisting either hat off or hat on. So there we go. Plus the fluff. Right. Uh, who else have we got now? Thank you for correcting me, Scotty, says Tony Mac. Not at all, Tony. It's not a question of correcting you. It's just a question of getting it absolutely right so there we are as far as i know they kept uh, independent ownership what are your thoughts on the issues in korea and the united states right well the first thing i'll say to you don't be fooled by kim john eel being a dafty he's far from that he's a very 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 smart cookie and very very sharp all right that's the first thing i'll tell you there the other thing is you've got uh, superpowers involved. You've got America, you've got China, you've got Russia, all just having a watch at what's going on there. Now, America, uh, you know, are very good at banging the big drum, shall we say. But they do need to be a little bit careful because uh, China is the big, big power in the world at the moment. You've also got India, of course, another superpower. And you've got to look that the world has changed. So there we are. Alex Duff says, I'll give it a bash. Try it, Alex. See how you go. Let me know if it's any help. Put it back on, says Steve Burrows. All right, Steve. No need to shout. All right, there we go. There's the bonnet back on. All right, no problem at all. Uh, Kim Jong-un. No eel. Sorry, it's no eel. It's, it's un. You're right. Kim Jong-un. Well, don't be fooled that Kim Jong-un is any sort of dafty because he's not. So there we are. I'm just telling you straight. Um, Kim's eaten too many pies, Scott, is it David Fraser? Well, they're not McClue's pies. I don't have an order for exporting McClue's pies to North Korea, and the sanctions would probably have stopped them getting in anyway. Melanie MacDonald, yes, hey, hey. Scotty, he's a madman, and there's a war coming. Says Ian Walker. No, I don't think there necessarily is, uh, you know, a war coming. I think that uh, superpowers always quite like the idea 
of war because they think they'll make a lot of money but they can get their fingers burned you know i mean look at iraq and afghanistan and places like that uh, i thought america had this star war shield to stop missiles or is that a fib says angie thompson well the whole thing is angie we don't really want missiles flying about right very important yes yeah, you definitely look better without your hat says tony mack how about a wee bit of flower of scotland in the box to end the show says alex duff i don't think i've got the the box handy alex i think the box <laughs> the box got moved downstairs the box got taken away can we have a share please share 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 uh, by my reckoning we've still got about four minutes is that right guys four minutes of scotty mcclue the first lord of the internet the world's top broadcaster just for you saying dinky do and we are growing and growing and growing in stature it's not just facebook live we're on periscope periscope we're on google plus we're on linkedin we're on youtube excellent everything look it out search it out get listening uh, 320 videos up on uh, on youtube for your edification and delight um, a thousand and five subscribers. You've got the Scotty McClue website, www.scotty-mcclue.com, and you've got uh, 10 million people have visited that. Are you a box player, Scotty? Yes, we can. Well, we can get a tune. So there we are. Nostradamus predicted it. The yellow man will destroy the earth. I think he was seeing double. There's two yellow men, says Ian Walker. Uh, he's a wizard in the box. So it's Alex Duff. You're very, very kind, Alex. Very generous to me. So there we go. Uh, we've got about two minutes left, guys. Uh, if he does if he does launch a bomb, he will be stupid, says Gerald Mackay Mackay. I don't think he's going to launch a bomb, Gerald Mackay Mackay. I think what he's doing is saying, look, I've got a deterrent, so don't start acting up with me. I'm in the club with the rest of you. Uh, so there are nearly lights out, says Ian Walker. Uh, I'd love a tune with you, says John McCaddy. Yes, is it John McCaddy or John McCaddy? Um, has North Korea got a yellow submarine? Well, I don't know. We all lived in the yellow submarine. I know that. Susan Forrest says, hat. So she says, hat on. Another great show, Scotty, says Steve Burroughs. Steve, it's just growing and growing and growing and growing. That's thanks to every single one of you. Sheer share share i love to see 41 people have liked your video and notifications i would love to see 41 people have liked and shared your video so share 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 uh mccaddy uh, john mccaddy excellent john well you and i could get a tune in the box we could give it a touch of far or stray or we could give it Glen Calla Castle. There you are. Do you think Trump's getting very power crazy and very self egotistical? What do you think? Well, I think we were spoiled, Tony Mac, with President Obama, who was an absolute gent. So there you go. And, uh, you know, you can't buy uh, gentlemanly behavior. Gentlemen are born and made. That's what I say. I know it. Two, four pipe marches. Yes, yes, it is indeed, John McCaddy. Two, four pipe march. Uh, Ian Walker for the tower, says David Fraser. Oh, Ian Walker, you've upset the nation. You're heading for the tower. The ravens will be waiting for you at the Tower of London. Deary, 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 deary me. The wife's loving the show tonight, says Christopher Anthony Smith. I love it, says John McCaddy. John McCaddy, uh, when did you last see the wee fox, says Nivag. Nivag, I saw the wee fox the other night. I didn't have my camera charged. And the wee fox was just chatting me absolutely gorgeous, about six inches away from my feet with a beautiful wee black nose and lovely, lovely thick furry ears and black paws. So there you are, the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool. All right, Ian, we'll give you a dance. And um, so there we are, we can do the Queen's Highlanders or something like that. 
I eat ravens for my tea, says Ian Walker. Of course you do. Right, we're going to have to dash, folks. We're just about out of time. Who can tell me the time? I can't see this here for all these lights. So there we are. Is it one minute to go? Is it nearly 11 o'clock? Um, let us know what is what. Now, uh, your job, get to go fund me and stick in two pounds. Every single one of you. Come on. Uh, a couple of quid into gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. I will be delighted to take your money and I will put it to the very best of uses. Probably better than you'd do yourselves. So there we are. Uh, time to stop taking the drugs, says Lewis coming. Okay, Lewis, if you want to stop taking them, but make sure you've checked with your doctor first. It's 11 p.m., says Angie Thompson. It's 11 now. 11 p.m., night, mate. Night, everybody. Thanks for being so beautiful. Have a fabulous week. Share everything with Scotty McClure on it until we all get together again next week. God willing, weather permitting, at 10 o'clock sharp, this is Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every single one of you live on Facebook Live. I shall sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of we Thursday. Au revoir and a cheerio. Cheerio, everybody. Dinky-doo. Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh, yes.